Hello, my long-term viewers, and welcome, any of you curious click-clickers. Welcome to my normal content, which is analyzing gameplay. That's right. You want to learn how to play like me? You want to hit those ludicrously ridiculous clips? Well, unlike that meme I posted about the one brain cell, how about I give you some real insight as to what I think when we're playing? That's right, what we're thinking. Me and this one brain cell, oh, we've concocted many a mighty schemes, and I'm here to show you all the most potent cheese. If you'll notice in the beginning, I spent a large time just taking damage without getting any hits in. That's okay, DDD has the resources to be able to tank those hits and still make a comeback. The basics of DDD and his game plan are fairly simple. The problem lies in what your main goal should be. Staying alive for as long as possible so that you can mentally record all of your opponent's habits and attack patterns. That way you can capitalize at the exact right moment. Right now, even though I'm getting bodied, technically, I'm chilling. It's good. This is still winnable. This piece of advice comes from a YouTuber by the name of Gaming with Glees. And what he says, okay, and I find this advice particularly useful for heavy games, right? He says, pop off with your opponent. If they get something cool, if they beat you real good, if they, you know, spank you real quick with a clip, pop off with them. And what will happen is that it will generate happiness in you, and the happiness will turn the cogs much faster and brighter than any sort of rage ever will. With that said, it can still be pretty dang hard to keep the salt at bay as a heavy main, but I promise it is worth it as the number one skill to master. There is such a thing as playing too fast with DDD. He is fairly limited in terms of frame data, so it's like this delicate balance between wanting to act fast, but actually needing to act at just the right time. Shout outs to the best dash dancer ever. This next part's kind of an unexplored bait with Gordo to us. See how he air dodged expecting that Gordo to come his way? Nah. You may have noticed last game, and you will certainly notice this game, that I throw out a lot of F smashes in a matchup that doesn't make sense to be throwing out F smashes in, except it does. You see, Young Link here can most certainly pretend that he is not a projectile character, run right up and box you to death. If you throw F smashes, which are deceivable, similar to like Meta Knight's F smash, then why would he ever jump in? Why would he ever run in? I can fight a few projectiles in a row, okay, but I can't fight both Toon Link and 10 million Nairs coming my way at the same time, so it's gotta be some kind of compromise. I need to throw these F smashes to deter him from ever getting within my bubble. Then I can enter his threat bubble at my will. The compromise of throwing F-Smash versus a projectile character is obviously he has ranged ways to punish it, but that's the idea. I want him to stick to his range because, again, I can't box Young Link. Young Link outboxes DDD every day. You see, every time I get within him, he just nares. So if I F-Smash and sequester him to either side of the stage, then I basically zone him even though he thinks he's zoning me and DDD wins by the ledge. The other unseen benefit of that F smash, okay, is right here. Notice how he opted to immediately shield behind me. I had time to jump, which means that he could have just mashed attacks in my bubble. But since I've been throwing F smashes, even when they aren't the right way, 
They've trained this Toon Link to not mash inside my bubble. And that, I mean, wow. You want Toon Link to lose? Get him to not mash inside your bubble. But sometimes the Toon Link might say no. And you see, I was desperately trying to keep him outside my bubble with those two pivot F smashes, and he still was like, nah, I'm coming in. Arrows and upbeat. Time for a little switch up in tactic. Sometimes you want to go midway, so he sense in that last moment he got through my threats of F smashes, I will abandon that idea momentarily and chase him down and start swinging. Here we are five seconds later, and all I had to do was mash buttons in his face for a couple seconds, and the Toon Link actually switches back to my original plan, and he starts zoning himself towards the corners. So you're both at last stock, and what you don't want to do as a heavy when you have the percent lead is start to get antsy for the kill. You are a heavy. Technically, I'm thinking about this situation. I'm at 50% and they're at 250%. Now they're at 300%. I just need to relax and wait. Don't put yourself in any position where they can land a slow kill move and wham, they'll trip up. So I personally think out of the three matches today, this is the best one. We played quite a few and the young Link is starting to adapt a lot more. Look at him now, mashing in my threat range constantly. There's no chance for me to do any kind of F smash deterrence. He's seen through the fraudulent F smash pressure. What an exquisitely timed spot dodge. I always say, if you're gonna spot dodge DDD's F smash or jet hammer, you gotta have cojones of steel. But if you wanna do a double up B mix up like I just did, you're gonna need cojones of titanium carbide. I don't even really know how to explain that sequence of events. I have tried to many times in the past explain exactly how to do stuff like that, but I can only describe it as a pure intuition, which makes it impossible to give you directions on how one might just go in their head, yay, I think I'll double up B right now and it'll work. I do believe that if you subconsciously recognize patterns, then it's way more easy for you to have this quote unquote intuitive, I can go for whatever I want in this current moment and it'll absolutely hit. But if you're not some kind of freak in nature like me with this subconscious pattern recognition, then what you can do is play, play, play the game as much as you can in hopes that your memory is good and that you can remember these situations. Because the real key is that reaction times are slow, but learned situations can be reacted to with superhuman precision. For any newcomers that made it this far in the video, thanks for still watching. And now for the actual secrets of my success is just those two things combined. So it's really the ability to easily recognize patterns paired with my memory. So it allows me to create a database in my head of not just this Toon Link, but every Toon Link I've ever played. And so I can fight this Toon Link and all of them at once, which allows me to counter in my head infinitely more scenarios than a single Young Link player could play. And I've probably said Toon Link a thousand times. Please forgive.